It's now again. Welcome back to It's Now Again, the podcast where we explore mindfulness practices from a secular evidence-based perspective. I'm your host, Jeremy West, and today we're tackling a tough but very human experience. How to mindfully deal with the guilt we feel after we've, re- after we've reacted in a way we regret. Whether it's snapping at a loved one, lashing out in anger, or simply saying something you wish you could take back, guilt can weigh heavily on us. But as with many difficult emotions, mindfulness can offer us a pathway through this guilt, allowing us to transform self-criticism into self-compassion and turn these moments into opportunities for growth. We've all been there. A situation escalates, our emotions get the better of us, and we react in a way that doesn't align with our values. Maybe you yelled at a friend or became defensive during a discussion. I've found myself being a Karen a few times, arguing with customer service people. Once the dust settles, the guilt sets in. This is often followed by a cycle of self-judgment. I shouldn't have done that. Why can't I control myself or I always mess up? While these thoughts are natural, they can trap us in a cycle of regret and guilt that doesn't really help us grow. Mindfulness offers us a different approach. Instead of getting caught up in self-criticism, mindfulness teaches us to observe our emotions, guilt included, with curiosity and compassion. The goal isn't to push guilt away or pretend it doesn't exist. Instead, mindfulness invites us to sit with our guilt, to understand where it's coming from, and to use it as a tool for self-reflection and learning. To better understand this process, think of guilt as a signal, much like a red light on the dashboard of a car. The light is there to let you know something needs attention, but it's not there to punish you. It's just a signal. Mindfulness helps us approach guilt in the same way. Rather than letting it overwhelm us or drive us into shame, we can treat it as a gentle reminder that something needs our awareness and we can address it with compassion. One of the key insights of mindfulness is the understanding that we are not our emotions. Just because you feel guilty doesn't mean you are a bad person. Guilt is simply an emotion, like any other, and it can be observed, understood, and ultimately transformed into something positive. To illustrate this, I want to share a story called The Sculptor and the Block of Stone. There was once a sculptor who was famous for creating lifelike statues out of stone. One day, a young apprentice asked the sculptor, how do you turn a block of stone into such a beautiful statue? The sculptor replied, the statue is already inside the stone. My job is simply to chip away what doesn't belong. This story reminds us that, like the sculptor, our job is not to be perfect, but to learn from our experiences and chip away at the behaviors or reactions that don't align with who we want to be. Guilt can be a tool that helps us recognize these behaviors, but it doesn't define who we are. Now that we've explored the concept of using mindfulness to deal with guilt, let's talk about some practical steps you can take when you're feeling guilty after reacting in a way you regret. Number one, acknowledge your guilt without judgment. When you feel guilt arise, the first step is to acknowledge it. Instead of pushing it away or denying it, take a moment to simply name the feeling. I'm feeling guilty about how I reacted. Notice where you feel the guilt in your body, whether it's tension in your chest or a sinking feeling in your stomach. By acknowledging your guilt without judgment, you create space for self-awareness and self-compassion. Number two, take responsibility, not blame. Mindfulness encourages us to take responsibility for our actions without falling into the trap of blaming or shaming ourselves. Taking responsibility means acknowledging that you could have acted differently, but it also means recognizing that you're human and that everyone makes mistakes. Instead of saying, I'm a terrible person for doing this, you might say, I made a mistake and I can learn from this. Number three, offer yourself compassion. When we feel guilty, our natural tendency is often to criticize ourselves harshly. But mindfulness teaches us to meet our emotions with kindness rather than judgment. Imagine how you would respond if your best friend made the same mistake. You wouldn't berate them. You'd likely offer understanding and support. You deserve the same compassion. You might say to yourself, it's okay to make mistakes. I'm learning and growing. Number four, reflect on what you can learn. After offering yourself compassion, take a a moment to reflect on what you can learn from the experience. What triggered your reaction? Were you feeling stressed, tired, or overwhelmed? By understanding the factors that contributed to your reaction, you can gain insight into how to respond differently in the future. This is where guilt can become a powerful tool for growth. 
It helps you recognize the areas where you want to change and improve. Number five, make amends if necessary. If your reaction hurts someone else, mindfulness encourages you to take action to make things right. This might mean offering a sincere apology or making amends in some other way. Apologizing mindfully means acknowledging the impact of your actions without making excuses and committing to doing better in the future. Remember, taking responsibility doesn't mean beating yourself up. It means using the experience to strengthen your relationships and your sense of integrity. Number six, set an intention to respond mindfully in the future. If this is something that you would really like to work on, maybe today's daily intention could be, how many more ways can I continue to respond to challenges with mindfulness even more? Setting this intention helps you stay focused on responding mindfully in future situations, using your experiences with guilt as opportunities for growth and self-awareness. Mindfulness teaches us that guilt doesn't have to be a burden. It can be a guide that helps us learn, grow, and become more aligned with our values. By approaching guilt with curiosity, compassion, and intention, we can transform it into a tool for self-improvement rather than letting it weigh us down. Well, that's it for today's episode. I, I do hope you've found some valuable insights into how mindfulness can help you navigate guilt with greater clarity and compassion. And if you're interested in going deeper into your mindfulness practice or you need personalized guidance on dealing with guilt, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions where we can explore these topics together. Visit jeremywest.net for more information. You can also check out my new It's Now Again app where you find a growing library of mindfulness practices, including guided, including guided, guided meditations, guided, guided meditations, including guided meditations to support your journey of self-compassion and personal growth. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, share it with others who might benefit, and rate the podcast. Your support helps us reach more people and continue exploring these important topics together. Until next time, keep practicing, keep growing, and remember, it's now again.